When you fall, you say I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and get up and keep going and you're going to see less and less because it is not about you. It is only about what Jesus did. Only about what he did and your faith in it. And, and the fact that we're called to be hated under glory. That's what we're called to do. And you know what? We've been graced to do it. Jesus suffered horribly for us. He was made that for us. And he is rejoicing and, and advocating for us right now. And has never left. Has never left. Because if you ain't Christ, it don't belong to you. Their evil prophecies don't belong to you. Their evil prognostication don't belong to you. It don't belong to you. It's not for you. Their dark winner is not for you. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me today on Preach Your Voice, Not an Echo. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Apostle Chantrell Davis. Today is May 1. It's my birthday, but I must come on to be obedient and deliver this word to you today. Um, all of us have things to rejoice for. Um, you should be rejoicing in the Lord that you woke up this morning, for we live, move, and have our entire being in Him. He is good every day. There's always a reason to praise Him. So we're going to come together in one accord this day, for there's no time and there's no space by way of the Spirit. So bring your hearts and mind in as we go before the Lord in prayer quickly before I deliver this right now word. And this is the heart of the Father this day. So bring your hearts in. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that we are alive at such a time as this. I thank you, Father God, that we are awake because you sustained us, Father God. I thank you for your mercy that is due to us this day, Father God. I thank you that your goodness, for your goodness that is insurmountable, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for your word of truth, your word of love, Father God, your word of peace, Father God. I thank you that your thoughts for us are good and not evil, thoughts of hope, future, and the expected end, Father God. I thank you that it is well with us this day, Father God, for you have blessed the habitation of the righteous, Father God. But I know you have cursed the habitation of the wicked, Father God. But I thank you, Father God, that you are great and you are merciful, Father God, plenteous and merciful, Father God. And I thank you that you show mercy to whom you will, Father. God. We thank you for the love that is shared abroad in our heart by way of your Holy Spirit, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for breath, Father God, and movement and sanity this day, Father God. We thank you for provisions, Father God. We thank you for the love of our family and friends, Father God. We thank you for the love of God, Father God. We thank you that you loved us with such greater love that we are called the sons and daughters of the Most High God, Father God. I take authority, Father God, in the name of Jesus as I deliver this message. I yield it to the Holy Spirit that is my prayer, paraclete. I acknowledge you, Holy Spirit. I thank you that you dwell within me and I yield to you this day to deliver the word, Father God, this right now word, Father God, in spirit and in truth, Father God. Not my will, but your will, Father God. Let these words be right, forcible words this day, Father God. I decree there will be great receptivity, Father God, that will penetrate penetrate the hearts of those who this word is sent, Father God. I thank you that it will receive with gladness, Father God, and it will take deep root, Father God, and they will bring forth fruit, and that fruit will remain, Father God. I took authority, Father God, over the atmosphere, Father God, and I dismantle all satanic and witchcraft acti activity, Father God, for I suffer them not to live according to thy word, Father God. You said what I bind on earth is bound in heaven, what I loose on earth is loosed in heaven, Father God, and I bind their activity, Father God. Every wicked word sent forth against this ministry or mine or merge, Father God, and those who will hear this word, I decree and declare those words are no and void. They shall not stand, neither shall they come to pass, Father God. Every mouth that rose against us in judgment, Father God, in the day or even over the night over in any evil altar, even the evil altars of their heart, Father God, I decree their mouths are condemned, Father God, already in the name of Jesus Christ. The word shall not stand, neither shall they come to pass, Father God. I thank you that you see the righteous thing to grant tribulation to those who trouble me, Father God. So trouble those who have troubled us in every room and every dimension through any host and through any entity, Father God. Every evil voice, Father God, and every evil speaker, Father God. Let their words return into their own bosom, Father God. Let their words frame their own wounds, Father God. Let their words frame what they must live in, Father God. For they have shot wickedly, Father God, shot at the privately at the righteous, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. I thank you, Father God. They have purpose wickedness, Father God, against the place of thy tabernacle, Father God. So I rise till I help and stir yourself up. Draw out a spirit and stop your way, Father God. Deliver us from those who are too strong for us, Father God, according to your goodness, your word, and your mercy, Father God. For we trust and we hope in you, Father God. Let the ears be open this day, Father God. And every demon that will close ears to this word, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind. I decree and declare they shall not go forth, Father God. But I thank you for life and life more abundantly in Christ, Father God. I thank you for your goodness, Father God, that is insurmountable, Father God, and your goodness and mercy that has pursued us this day, Father God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Be magnified and be lifted up and be blessed in all places of your dominion. In the name of Jesus Christ, I seal this prayer and I say amen. Beloved, I'm on here today because I'm rejoicing in uh, another day of life, another year of life and vitality and in service of the Lord. But he didn't have to save any of us because the Lord is he's God and God alone and he don't need anybody. But he desired a family. He desired a creature that had never been created before, and that is God's in the flesh. There is only one almighty God. 
But we know even as Christ spoke, when he called himself the son of God, the Pharisees wanted to stone him because they knew in sin that you are the, they knew by him saying he was the son of God, he was making himself equal because you can only be what you sprang forth from. You don't have a right to define you. He defines you. You are who you sprang from. Now this world is trying to alter and change what the Lord has created. That's why you see so much chaos going on now. It is a hot mess with what's going on. I, beloved, if you're not awake to see the things that are going on in this world and in this earth, then it is not simple vaccines. It is not simple uh, so-called pandemic. It is not simple. This is in every way the bringing together. And I've told you before. That the Lord has drawn out all things back into one, back into himself. But the Lord is doing this by way of his Holy Spirit. There is no other way to be drawn back into the Lord and at, into him as one. For we live, move, and have our entire being in him. We are one in him. Our life is hid in him. We died with him. We were resurrected with him. We lived with him. We ascended with him. We were seated with him. If you are a believer and a follower of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, and you have been baptized with that, uh, his Holy Spirit, you are in him. You are no longer alive by way of this flesh, but only by the quickening of the Spirit. Beloved, I want you to pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention. The changing of what the Lord has created is in what they're doing. It has already begun. Don't be fooled by the simplicity that is his Christ. Don't be fooled by the time. He said, no man knows the day or the hour. But he said, you are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. It's going to overtake the people who are wandering after and marveling after the beast. Because the beast is already on the scene. The people who are marveling after the beast right now will be wandering. But he said, you are not in darkness that it should surprise you. I can't believe the people that don't know what's going on. Beloved, you need to stay on your face at all times before the God, the God, your father. He says, cry out to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, which thou know it's not. Ask him in honesty of heart and be ready to hear whatever he shows you. Bind the spirit of suspicion in every form it comes in. Every whispering spirit, every leviathan spirit, every serpentine spirit, every lying devil, you bind it because you have the authority to. You command your mouth, shut the name of Jesus. And you ask the Lord to heighten your discernment and help you to receive with gladness and with wisdom everything he tells you because the hour is later than you think. Y'all pay attention to what's going on. What's happening to the people in the news. The people that are getting sick from vaccines, miscarrying babies, older people starting their cycles again in their 80s. It's out there if you want to know it. I'm saying all that to say this because this is the word of the Lord. Because you say you follow him and you belong to him. The word of the Lord, this is a rhema 411 because the Lord spoke this. So we're going to use the month of May. And it's the reason he gave it. Thus says the Lord your God. That you say you have my mind. Why not my memory? Again. Thus says the Lord your God. You say you have my mind. Why not my memory? What's his memory? The memory of his mercy. He's speaking about mercy. Because I'm telling you right now. I'm going to go into some scripture. But there's going to be a lot of things going on. I, I want y'all to listen to me. From the top all the way to the bottom. What has been done with everything going on has not been gotten away with. It is a great uncovering because the last four years was time for people. But it is his mercy. It is his mercy. Many of you can't cry out based upon even the righteousness right now. Because the Lord said what you sow whatsoever you sow is reaped. You've sown things that have a harvest. So according to his mercy, let there be crop failure. What do you think is meant by praise stops the enemy and steals, stop, steals the enemy and stops the avenger? You have to know what the avenger is. The avenger is that evil harvest that you got coming. 
So your praise of your Lord will stop. An evil harvest. And it's a harvest you've sown. He said whatsoever sown must be reaped. So you cry out according to his mercy. But the principle of his praise will stop that avenger. The avenger is what is due to you for the wickedness you've done. The word of God tells us that mercy rejoices over judgment. What does that mean? Because he's merciful forever. But he shows mercy to whom he will. He tells you to seek justice and to love mercy. He don't tell you who you get to choose. But he said mercy is not to who wills or wrongs. But it, the Lord shows mercy to whom he will. So you ought to always love mercy. Seek justice. No matter what's been done to you, but love the mercy of God. Because the mercy that rejoices over the judgment that you would have received is the mercy that you've shown toward others. Because I'm telling you this, from the top to the bottom, y'all finna see judgment start to hit. From sickness, from death, from removal, from jail. Some people are going to most likely commit suicide. And you need to begin to pray the mercy of the Lord, for he is not willing for any to perish. Begin to pray according to his mercy. Dear God, what would the heathen think? Of such a good God. Even people who have severely wronged you. Yes you seek justice. Always. Because it is his way. But love the mercy that the Lord shows upon them. Whatever he chooses to do. However long he chooses to do it. Or however short he tries to make it. Because the Lord knows whose heart is humble. The Lord knows who is truly broken. And the Lord knows who is attempting to flatter him with their lips. He tells you to love mercy. But he will show it to whom he will. You can't will mercy up on somebody. And your running don't cause it to come up on someone. He shows mercy to whom he will. So again, thus says the Lord your God. If you have my mind. Why not my memory? That memory is the memory of his mercy. For it is mercy that calls him to see with the joy. That was set before him. To not see you in your present state. But to see you in the complete full possibilities of Christ. These are the same eyes and sight he's trying to give you. This is the same sight that he causes the army to go to war and die for their king. For it is not you kisses and hugs. So the Holy Spirit spoke that to me. I've never seen kisses or hugs cause an army to go to war and die for their king. You begin to see the glory he saw. He saw your glory when he laid down his life. He saw your glory when he was merciful. And these are the eyes you are to see with. Ask your God every day to help you to want wisdom. Many of you don't even want wisdom. So you can't receive it. You must ask for it. The word of the Lord. We're going to make May be the kickoff but not the end of my mind and my memory. Mercy says the Lord. For mercy rejoices over judgment. And that mercy that rejoices over judgment. Is the mercy you showed. The judgment you would have got because of the mercy you showed. Will rejoice over what you have come into you. These are principles. And this is on the heart of the father. Because you're going to see a lot go forth. Many of you are rejoicing. Just like you rejoiced when you thought Trump was sick. You rejoiced when you saw people go down. This is not the way of the spirit. That is the way of the world. We love to see justice. There's a time of rejoicing going to come. When you won't be laughing and rejoicing. When he come back to execute wrath on those who have rejected him in his way. And that's the finality of the judgment. Because they have chosen their way. But in this dispensation that is grace. The gospel of the kingdom. You are to seek justice always. And love mercy immensely. Let me read a couple of scriptures here. Can I just speak this right out of my heart? You know the, the, uh, the word of the Lord. But this is the heart of your father this day. You say you have my mind. Because many of you got your mouth on people. You rejoice when you see people fall and they go through things. And this is not the heart of the father. Okay? If you have my mind. He says, why not my, most, my memory? Mercy. Let's read Micah 6 and 8. He had showed thee, O oh man. Man is male and female. Adam. O oh man, what is good? And what doth the Lord require of thee? What 
time you require thee. But for you to do justly, seek and do justly, and love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Walk humbly with him. Come let us reason together. The Holy Spirit said as one. When you are together, you are no longer separate. We are not separate of him at no time and no day. Okay? For you to do justly, and that's to seek justice in everything. And silence. Some of your some of you are going to be judged, excuse me, by your indifference, your silence on what's going on now. You ain't in that. You too. Some of you got some things coming to you. Let go of what's been done to you. Don't rejoice in anyone's fall. Okay? Matthew 5 and 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Obtain, not attain. Catch the difference. Oh, I hear you, Holy. Oh, Lord, I hear you. Catch the difference of those words. You have attained to grace. That gives you, grace gives you the power to obey. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Not attain. Attain is just you grab a hold of what you already got, which is this grace. You shall obtain mercy by being merciful. Okay? His mercy endures forever. Though many forsake their own mercy. I want you to understand this. The Lord's mercy endures forever. He is merciful forever. But there are many who you're about to see these judgment come upon. They have forsaken their own mercy. Who is their mercy? The creator. Father Yah. God Almighty. The only living God. They have forsaken him and all his ways. So they forsook their own mercy. He's merciful forever. And if you say you are like him. He said if you have my mind. Which is his word and his way. Why not my memory? His memory includes his mercy. For it is his mercy that caused him to lay down his life from the foundation of the earth. If you have his mind, you should have the memory of his mercy. He shows mercy to whom he will. And the people that are about to receive judgment are people who have forsaken their own mercy. But you are to still love it and still pray for them to receive it. But he will only show mercy to whom he will. We're going to get to the scripture. Okay? The Lord shows mercy. Let's read the forsaken first. They, though many forsake their own mercy. This is First Chronicles 16 and 34. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Yes, it does. They forsake it. Now, let's go. The Lord will show mercy to whom he will. This is Romans 9, 15 through 18. I'm going to read the whole context. For he said to Moses... I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. He don't give you that choice. He told you to seek justice and love mercy. He said I because he's God. He's going to always judge righteously because he is a righteous judge. And he knows the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of their heart. He knows their inward parts and when they don't know them. You don't know them. That's why he tells you to love mercy. But he says he. I says the Lord will show mercy to whom I will. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Verse 16. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Okay? Your will can't make him show mercy on somebody. And your running, which means you should run and not go where you should walk and not pay. Your walking, your running in Christ, don't cause him to show mercy on nobody. He alone shows mercy on whom he will. Okay? Verse 17, for the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that the name that my name might be, be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and on whom he will he harden. It. Some people are set toward hardness. And who are you to ask the Lord why? But your job still. Is to love mercy. For you don't know who's the vessel of honor. Who's the vessel of dishonor. You might be a vessel of honor one season. And a vessel of dishonor the next. Because he has to show his power in and through you. Even if it's through the breaking of your spirit. Because you've gone your own way. Many have gone their own way. And the recompense of walking their own way. Has a time. 
And I'm telling you that time is now. The time has begun. And ah, only the Lord knows how long it will endure. But you at all time ought to be praying for mercy. You at all time ought to be seeking justice. You at all times ought to love mercy. He shows mercy to whom he will. And whom he will, he hardens. The Lord your God says, if you have my mind, why not my memory, which is my mercy? So you go in the May and onward, because you're going to see a lot of things with his mind and his memory, which is incorporated in his mind, which is his mercy. Seek justice and love mercy. I came on this day in obedience. Birthday or not, who gave me life? This word is right now. And I need you to hearken unto it. If you have bitterness, unforgiveness in your heart, fall on your face because you will be one of these who will be reaping judgment. You cannot enter into the kingdom with hate in your heart, with bitterness, with unforgiveness in any form. Those of you who have lied and divided, go make it right. You don't get to just leave it. Those of you who hold the unforgiveness for any reason you think you have, you have no right to hold anyone. For who you, you, you don't forgive, don't be expecting forgiveness from your Lord. This is his word. Seek justice always. And love mercy always. Do justly always. And love mercy always. For only the Lord who is the righteous judge will show mercy to whom he will. And to whom he will, he will harden. You need to take this word in. Okay? This is the word of the Lord. He has given you a mouth and wisdom that your adversaries can neither gain, say, nor resist. So seek to speak right words in due season. That your words will be forcible. Ask the Lord to draw out any unforgiveness in your heart. Because I'm telling you, this is the season. Those of you who have hardened hearts toward people, lying and gossiping, dividing, hateful and bitterness, you better release it. Because this dividing line that has been going on is going to be made manifest. And as you saw the word the other day, and I, that's a whole separate message, and I'm going to keep it separate. That there will be a table of display. He will make a table before you in the presence of your enemy. And the Holy Spirit himself said to me that tables are not only for eating, but for display. And it will be a glorious display for those who are over here. And it will be a disgraceful display for those who are in this judgment. So the month of May go in with the heart of your father. If you burn my mind, why not my memory? Mercy, mercy, mercy. For it rejoices against judgment. The judgment you would have received. And let your praise still the avenger of the harvest that you would have had coming to you. Take heed, for this is hot off the press. This is fresh bread, and it is the heart of your father. If you burn his mind, then you should have his memory, his memory, and the memory of his mercy. Beloved, take this message in. This is Apostle Chantrell Davis. Grace be with you, beloved, and I love you all. Did you know that when you hit thumbs up, you enable more to be fed by the very message that just fed you? So share the spiritual meal, feed others, work a righteous work, work at evangelism by working the thumb. Thumbs up, feed more. Thumbs up, feed more. So into the good ground of preach be a voice not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the truth of the word of God. Of the word of God.
1 Corinthians 9.11 reads, If we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account. We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice, not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.